Wanna see how I created a this gorgeousness? Yeah, of course you do. Why am I even asking? Brick emotion. Hello, Claire here. Today it's finally happening. I'm going to show you what I have built ages ago. And then I haven't told you that I've built it, so you didn't even know that you were waiting for it, but I have, so... I'm gonna show you the rainbow flag that I made. I'm gonna go get it. Not only am I going to show you this beauty close up, I actually have the recording of how I built this. I'm gonna speed up the building process significantly and walk you through all of my thought processes that went into building this. Let's start with how I made the base for the flag itself. Here you can see it's back and the logic that goes with it is that I wanted to do this rainbow slash pride flag and to do that I first had to research it a bit. Turns out most of the flags use an aspect ratio of 2 to 3 or 1 to 2. I figured that the 2 to 3 one would look way better on at least some social media Instagram. So that's the one I went with. For now I also just wanted to do the 6 colored flag and I wanted to have some space on each of the colors but not too much so that the flag wouldn't become too ginormous. In the end I've settled for four studs because that allows me enough wiggle room to work with some parts that I wanted to use and since it's an even number it's easier to work with while dealing with Lego. Then I did a bit of math. Four studs times six colors is 24 studs so I knew the flag would be 24 studs high and then three halves of that is 36. So I made my flag 36 studs long. On the back I secured all of these plates with some more plates and because they are on the back side it really doesn't matter which colors I used so I chose black ones. Mostly because black plates are the ones I use the least and also many of them are still damaged from like 30 years ago and I don't intend to use them in any mock where they would be prominently featured. I only made sure to make the border white because I wanted to film this and most of my backgrounds are white so yeah white it was for me. While I was building this I haven't considered the possibility of maybe displaying it upright so I have not made a stand nor have I paid any attention to are the pieces going out of their frame. In fact, I intentionally made some of the pieces stick out because I like the effect it makes. But if you were to put this upright somewhere, you would need to make sure that at least the bottom row does not exceed the frame you are working with. And also you should add a few bricks to the front and the back so the flag doesn't tip over easily. But more on that later. I decided to add texture to one row at a time because that's the simplest thing that I could do. Just pick out the parts of a particular color that I wanted to do, spread them around the table and then pick and choose which one is going where. Since I did want to include some variety of colors and I set a minimum of three for myself, I must tell you that with the violet one there was not much to choose from. <laughs> Apart from the standard dark violet that I used for the base, there are only the lighter and medium lavender as well as the transparent one. The transparent one saved me a bit because there's the transparent violet one and also the transparent violet one with the glitter. Not that you can see the glitter from afar but uh, you know it makes me happy. What I'm showing you here is literally how I put all of this together. 
This was my first attempt at doing Griebling at such a huge size. Griebling, if you don't know, is a term that a Lego enthusiasts like to use for when you're adding elements to a surface that don't do anything but add texture. And for me, I would add also adding height and color variations because I like varied stuff. So just giving this flag some texture was not enough. I had to do more. Everything I'm doing here, you are seeing sped up significantly. And when I say significantly, I mean 1000 to 1400 percent, which is, you know, quite a lot. I also cut out all of the breaks that I made and uh, all of the times when I had to go back to find another piece that I just remembered that I had. I will also admit of it being very fun going through my whole Lego collection and finding things that would be fun to use with this project. So I used all of them. And don't worry, I am not done with the purple yet. I will get back to it. It was just like uh, the first stage of putting something down. You will probably not be surprised to know that the biggest treasure trove that I found for parts to use for textures was my plants bin. In terms of leaves, flowers and corals. I was also amazed to find so many animals in weird colors. And by weird I mean I don't think it's every day you come across a blue bear. So yeah, that kind of weird. One of the biggest tips I would give you if you try to do this yourself and that I mostly manage to follow here is to put the biggest pieces first. That might sound completely logical to you and it is, but uh, yeah, I, I forget it sometimes, so I need a reminder. This is why I'm laying down the leaves and the corals first and then filling in the gaps with other stuff. This is so minor, but I'm so proud of myself for figuring out how to incorporate the green snake into this belt. I didn't want to attach it to anything and then I just hid it under the leaves. And it fit there so well, it, it's not coming out. This flag fell two times from my hands and not once did the snake come out. Other pieces fell off, but not the snake. But I think that is also the only part that I just stuck underneath something else. Everything else I tried to attach in some way to something else. Clips and one by one flower pieces are excellent for just that purpose. That is how I attached the wand, the banana and the kitchen utensils. <laughs> Can't forget them. The hair and helmet and hat pieces that you can see I used were also a kind of a surprise. I did not expect to have as many. And while all of these parts are strange-ish, to come in such colors, I find it absolutely hilarious that I found kitchen utensils that I could use here as well. That to me was just mwah. You might have already noticed that not all of the parts are strictly of the color of the row I'm putting them on. And that is completely okay. I am not bothered with those orange spots on the turtle nor with the yellow belly of the bluebird. When that effect is visible only here and there, I find it just adds to the visual effect that I want to create here. Again, you can see me minding the borders between the colors, but not that much. I took them more as guidelines than strict rules. I simply prefer the look of it. I spent way too much time deliberating on which colors I would use with the yellow one. 
yellow was obvious, light yellow also, but the light orange felt like it could be with the yellow or with the orange. And yes, both of those colors aren't as value rich as blue and green are. I mean, there are like a million shades of blue and green, so they weren't a problem. But yellow and orange were. Mostly because of that, but also because I had some golden leaves lying around, I decided to put gold with yellow. I could have put gold with the orange just as easily, but I did also have orange leaves, so I did not need leaves for the orange. I needed leaves for the yellow. I did make this before Lego made yellow leaves, so so just just let let's leave it at that. While I do think this color combination works fairly well here, out of the ones that are here, it's my least favorite. Also, what I've discovered here was that putting just one or two of the light yellow actually sticks out way more than putting five things of light yellow in it. It did kind of surprise me to see that it was the most noticeable color on the whole flag. Unfortunately, I think that is lost a bit on the video. But just believe me, in person, the light yellow sticks out. I don't like to leave empty spots on the surface that I'm texturing. So I tend to have many, many one by one pieces nearby just so I can use them when needed. You can see me trying out stuff and how it works and can I get them closer together? Can I put something else in? Because I don't want the empty space. I want to get rid of it. And the only way to get rid of it is to put something in its place. And yes, you are seeing some studs through here. That is normal. That's okay. I don't mind having an empty stud here and there. What I mean by an empty spot is a place where I could put something in, but I still haven't. Those spots are to be avoided at all costs. And I mean, that's what the one by one flowers are for. You might not tell from me fiddling so much with it here, but I was very proud of myself for using the transparent orange chain within this build. Its ends are fixed, but it curves around other pieces, just destroying those empty spots I was just talking about. And since orange was another value-poor color, at least as far as Lego's concerned, I needed every advantage I could get. That meant using coral, which I would have thought I would have used with the red, but no, I used it with orange. And in real life, you would not confuse those two, but somehow in my video, uh, they, they look pretty much the same, yes. So no, don't worry, Lego still hasn't come out with an orange tiny octopus. That one's coral. That was also the occasion where I learned that there are two different transparent oranges. One of them is neon and it screams at you, I'm orange. Whereas the other one is just what you would expect a transparent orange color to be. In the end, I find it fairly funny that this orange row turned out to be both fire and ocean themed. I mean, fire, sure, orange is one of the fire colors, but ocean? Hmm. I did learn a lot both about Lego colors and where to find them while building this. In case you haven't started by now, you can try to find all six infinity stones in this build. And no, I did not hide them in any way. I find them just like a nice Easter egg to add to everything else that's going on here. Another maybe unexpected color combo is the red and pink one. Some of you might be aware that pink is basically just light red. 
But I believe there are also many people who would not think of combining red with magenta and pink instinctively. How do I know those people exist? Well, I was one of them. I really had no idea what I was gonna do with the red, having used up all of my oranges already. And then basically I was forced to use pink and magenta. And I think it actually turned out great. And I'm very happy that I did that. That big red plant piece you are seeing in the upper right corner, I think that's from a 90s set. And I remember loving that piece when I was young. And now I came across it and I was like, I'm gonna use you. I don't know how, I don't know if you're gonna fit, but I will make you fit. I also really wanted to use treasure that you can see in the upper left corner. By a random happenstance, I happen to have lots of treasures in my inventory. And I thought, haha, this is a great time to use one. And then she just didn't fit. Remember how before I have told you to just ignore some dots of other color? Well, this was too much. This is not just a bit, this is more like 50% of what you can see, if not more. Treasure had to go, as much as it pained me. Luckily, there were many, many, many other things that I could use, and I have. Many, many food items and pots and cups and all of that. Food accessories. Once I was done with the flag, I had to go back in because as I was doing the rows, I actually got better at doing this. And then after I made the red one and I made it so full, I loved it so much that I, 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 I had no choice. I had to go back to the violet one and cram in more stuff. This technique might be the only time where I feel like cramped is what you want to go for. In any case, I added some more flowers and then I added some more flowers and then I added some more horns. And then after I show you how everything is done, I still went back and added some more stuff onto everything, because why not? <laughs> and that's the main reason why I am now going to show you this flag in closer detail. I have to say that I love the look that I've achieved. It looks like too much, but in a good way. There are so many animals and different kinds of hidden treasures hidden or well not that hidden i love how the colors work together like even the gold doesn't really bother me and i absolutely adore all of the bling that i put in there and by that i mean all of the transparent pieces that are there and yes i had so much fun building this so much fun <laughs> I can't wait to do something like this again. I just haven't figured out what I would do. If you have any suggestions for me, do leave them in the comments. I would love to know what you think. Until the next time you click on one of my videos, bye bye. And this is what happens if you want to display this flag upright and you only place some extra bricks on the back side and not the front. So learn from my mistakes. Either don't display it like this or put some bricks on the front side as well. Preferably before you start building. So you put this nice texture over the bricks as well.